Right, in the past I've got over this wall a few times and I was greeted by cows who were running towards me here and I, I was able to get through a gap just at the end of this stretch of wall and just about get over away from the from the cows that were getting quite excited when they saw me. So I, I came down here, I was talking to them, I was saying, oh no you mustn't do that and they were mooing and running, they started to run. Fortunately there is an escape route and I don't know if it's designed on purpose for people because I got over here. I just climbed over. In fact, it's not as bad as it used to be. Walked along there, walked around the edge and then get over. That's what I had to do before. But today looks quite peaceful. We can't go... What I'm doing, I'm going to try and enjoy the mineries because uh, then I've got to walk across all these fields, keeping my fingers crossed. Um, there's no herds. Because um, I've still got to get back to Wells, don't forget. But I've had a lot of hill the first half. The first four hours of this walk has to do with the water people. They were here a minute ago doing something. Oh, they're just walking back down the hill now. Yeah, you can go down that way, but then there's a herd down there, see? There is a herd in that field. This doesn't take long, this bit, to walk through the mineries. And it, we'll be going in fields right over there by the White House. So we're actually on the way. We're just walking through the mineries en route. Which I've explored and I've done videos. They're all, a lot of them are on YouTube that I did of the mineries, the old mineries. Um, I've wandered all over them. I know where the potholes are. Um, I'm not doing that sort of exploration today. I really wanted to concentrate on the barrows, and I did, and Kodak woke up. Kodak woke up in time, but it has to cool down. It gets very warm, and it just stops. And, uh, and I find if it tends to stop, if I'm not using it, uh, and I've just got it open, but I'm not actually taking any pictures. Now it's working at the moment, so it wouldn't it wouldn't normally stop unless the battery was dead. Um, what's happening now is it's uh, it's work. It's doing the video. It's working, so it, it doesn't usually collapse. But if I was to not to say I was to stop the video now, perhaps take one picture and then just leave it open, that's when it freezes sometimes. Because it's actually doing something without working properly. Yeah, so there's a, a drove I usually quite often follow. I don't always come up here where the burrows are. I go on the lower track. I come across fields from pretty down that way. You can't see the church, it's behind that copse there. Um, <clears throat> you can never really see the church. That's why I like to make an effort to go in. I'm really glad I did. I signed their book. And I, I got a pamphlet with the Queen on it, of their service there. So I'm quite happy. I'm glad I went in there. They got some beautiful stained glass window. Some beautiful little images in there. And like I said, it was a place I used to like coming. And I used to park Old Berta there. And I always, nearly always went in the church for a little while just to say hello. And um, and then I would um, go for a walk, sometimes come up to the burrows, sometimes walk down and do the mineries, sometimes walk across all the fields over there to the Ebber Gorge and back again to Walberta. That's what I used to do. And I used to have a picnic, I'd have a flask of hot water ready for a cup of tea when I got back, dry socks and shoes. Um, I feel very sad because really I should have, Alberta shouldn't have been taken from me like she was. She was vandalised and she felt the MOT and it was a very fat, sad time for me. 
because of all that because they broke her exhaust and uh, it was a very sad time for me indeed but I've got over it I've still got out I always remember that van I'll never forget that van she's taken me all over the UK all over the UK Scotland down to Cornwall Wells Kent Canterbury Cambridgeshire Huntingdonshire Yorkshire Lancashire Cumbria and all up Scotland way Stirling Schoon Dunfermline Edinburgh Iona now see there's a gate there well there's a gate here I'm gonna have to see which is the because being summer a lot of this gets very overgrown and if people don't use it it's too overgrown to walk through now in the winter here this can be very boggy but we've had a lot of dry weather but I've um, had to walk through bog before now um, it's very 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 boggy country usually but because of the climate change everything is drying up and it's affecting the ecology uh, it's affecting the soil the soil is a living organism it's full of microorganisms it's full of life and without water it also perishes people think oh it's just a bit of mud and dirt it's, it's life in the soil it does a job Anyway folks, I'm going to get over this stile. I'm just going to stop and take a few more pictures. Right, I'm now walking, skirting some of the boggy areas that are not quite often boggy. Um, further down it used to be the worst part where it was very muddy and boggy. Now some people probably walk through this field beside me here. I quite like doing the, the wild bits though. part of the fun. There's Stockton Wood in front of us. Like I said I've wandered all around that. Once again Alberta used to take me there. Even I've even taken Zara and Brandy in that wood. I've took them there for a drive out. I've got to eat my chocolate before it melts in my pocket as well. There's never a time to stop to eat is there? I will though, in a minute. I'll give the camera a little rest. I'm frightened of it packing up, so as long as it's working and we're going along. Yeah, I'd have to have a, a day out here, which is, I can't do, because look how long it's taken me to get here. This is how long it's taken me to get here. There's no time to do the, uh, the forest as well. Um, so that will have to be saved for another time and I, if, if I do have a vehicle I will try and do the forest again because I've been all over that forest, all round it. Of course there were some years from 2008 to 2014 when I didn't have a vehicle but I used to hire when I wanted to go away family tree work it's very expensive to hire now it's ridiculous actually you could hire for about 250 years ago now they want a thousand it's ridiculous one bump and you've lost it all those pretty little flowers. Hello, you come out to greet me on my way. I remember seeing a little mouse once. It was so busy in the beetle, it, it was quite angry with me for coming along. So I quickly got out of the way and left the mouse to the beetle. Yeah, <laughs> it was a really bossy little mouse it was. This has been used, I can tell. This has been well used. And it's not boggy. Now the boggy bit is coming up near those trees when it's 
I've always known it boggy actually, so it's just a bit weird having uh, it dry like this. Yeah, sometimes you get pretty flowers in that out here as well. And there's the remains of some there. Now that person I seen way back, she, they could be just going down the field, which is so much easier, of course. You just do the field walk. So a horse has been down there. I've seen um, cow dung, uh, not cow dung, horse, horse dung. Horse manure. God, yeah. Now this is where it, all down here it used to be really boggy, and it's not. It's not even damp. And it would, if it wasn't used this route, it, you wouldn't be able to see the path or anything. Now where it's rich and green, you see where it's all rich and green. Basically, this is where it is always always very damp and you're having to tiptoe around here normally all right look at that lovely scene there i'm going to turn a bit more video in i haven't had my chocolate yet um seems to be all right at the moment so that's the way i would go if i was going to go to stockton wood and forest we would have the beautiful colorful toadstools and mushrooms any day now, like the end of September, uh, it usually happens. So I'm having a nice little wander along here now. There'll be a little tiny sort of lake or pond, whatever you want to call it, with reeds. Um, I don't know if they're the product of the mineries where, the, where they were doing surface mining and left sort of holes in the ground and they filled with water naturally could be. Everything about this place can be found online by the way and I have done more detailed videos before and I probably had it and I probably had a Sony um, when I did it as well. Now this is a junction point. Now you can either walk going past the caving club the Potholers Club, go follow that route there and go past their, their club or you can go this way. That way slightly quicker, you come out on the road quicker. It was long, this was the actual bit where I saw the little mouse eating the beetle along this little stretch here. We're coming up to reeds now and here you'll see a a lake which you wouldn't see if we'd gone through that way there's a there's a lake there look that's pretty isn't it i'm going to take a picture now hold on right back on video again the reason i'm trying to do a bit more videoing uh as well and pictures is because i i have no idea i'll never be, i won't be able to come out here again unless I'm driven out here. Uh, it's already a very big walk when I get the 126. It's a big walk and I know I have to get to Wells yet for that last bus. I've got to, I've got to get there really for half five. The last part of the walk which I've done before this year, which is across the fields, um, will be a march because time is short. But the important thing was to do this bit. Uh, you'd have to go and look back in the year for when I did the walk from Westbury Sub Mendip to Pretty and then back across the fields. I, look at, I never had time to do this. And and I, I, if, even now, it would be more leisurely if I got an earlier bus, you know, two hours earlier, like I did Saturday. I got on the eight o'clock bus. And I had an eight hour. I got out by, oh, let me see, I'll pass a nine. Yeah, I was walking for six hours that day. That's only on Saturday. When I went to visit the cathedral. 
and the old Mend mental hospital. So there we are. We've come down. We've come down through there, folks. You won't see the burrows now. That's why I did lots of f footage of them when I was right up there. They're out of view now. And all this is to do with the mining. This is the mineries. Under all this shrubbery and grass are features. There's a long tube tunnel there. That's one of the furnaces, the kilns. There's more than one. These are big tubes under the ground. Another one there. And it's all been videoed by me before in detail. I've, I've walked all over them. Now in this bit here, this is quite a dangerous area and it should really be marked. There are places where you could fall down six feet if not further. There's no warning. Uh, there's some very open shafts in here. Uh, I, I followed all the paths around here. I've been in and out weaved in the past, but not today. Today we're just passing through and looking and remembering when we first seen this, remembering its history, when this was a busy black filled land with smoke. Scattered over there there's pot, big potholes, caverns. That's why you've got the cave-in people that have got a club there because this place is full of potholes as well that link up with the cheddar system. Lots of swallets. Over and out, and carry it on, folks. More features there. More, more kilns and stuff. Every hump and bump here is of significance. Every hump and bump. Well, this was a very industrial, busy area. As I walk, you can feel the slag. It gets blown about as well, you see. Carried in the wind. Lines of pathways. All these humps and bumps are all evidence of the mining. The surface mining. That was done here. I don't I know if the Romans were here as well. But Victorians definitely were. And people followed the Victorians as well. They didn't pack up right away. No. It is a bit damp here. Yeah, you can tell with the lushness of the leaves. A little bit boggy here because it gets no sun, you see. But everything you see around you is all mineries. There's a little hut here. Dedicated to somebody. I think somebody who died in a pothole. I'm not sure, but it could be. It's got a, a concrete um, slab that oh, there's a name on it. There's a kitchen there. I think you can stay. They put people up, you know. It's like a lodge, you know. Yeah, it's to do with a caving club. Shepton Mallet Caving. Yeah, what was he called again? Is it Thomas or Francis? Terence Fitch, 1934 to 2008. That's right, in memory of him. I wasn't coming out here in 2008. I started, it could have been 2010. As soon as I started to explore the area, I wanted to start knowing my Somerset, and uh, that's what I did. This seems to get more 
cleaned up each time we come, if you like. Uh, flatter and a little flower there. Yeah. And if you, if you walk to the edge, which I'm not going to do today, you can look down at all the slag heaps. Let's take a picture. <laughs> 